Hello everyone. I welcome you all in this brand new tutorial series in which we are going to learn or to get to know the process of a simple character creation using ZBrush, Maya and Substance Painter. And in this tutorial series, we are going to create a character from the game Among Us. So let's not waste time and just get into the ZBrush and the reference image which I am using is provided in the description box and the subscribe button is also around there. So if you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us. So let's get started with the video. When you open up ZBrush, you will get the light box. You can hide the light box by going on to the hide button or you can press comma key on the keyboard. Then you can go to simple brush icon, then choose sphere 3D and I then drag sphere 3D on the canvas, then press T button for the edit object mode, then click on the make poly mesh 3D, 3D button and change the basic material, change the material to basic material and I am pending a cylinder for the body of the character and you can select that subtool by directly clicking on that subtool in the viewport while holding alt on the keyboard then I am using gizmo to place that cylinder according to the character's body and if you have seen the character from the Among Us game then you might be familiar that those characters are made with basic shapes, basic cylindrical shapes. So that's why we are using cylinders and we are going to block out the major forms of the character. Then after that, we are going to do the detailing on the character. And you should remember, you should remember that uh, for making you to start sculpting on the character, you have to press make, po make polymesh 3D. And as you'll all know, if you have gone through my other videos, I have duplicated that cylinder by going on to the Z plugin, then Subtool Master, then Mirror button. Now I'm going to merge the sphere with the cylinder by going on to the Merge Down button. Then after merging that, I will turn on the Dynamesh by default resolution. The resolution is 124 right now. Then I I will smooth out the the jagged parts, and you can turn on the symmetry by clicking X button on the keyboard and just hold Shift to smooth out the mesh. If you have gone through my other videos you might have familiar you might have been familiar with this step of mine because i always do the smoothing always do and do a lot of smoothing onto the meshes because if you are sculpting anything by, by hand it's not possible to get a procedural kind of shape sometimes some things get got distorted so i make sure to use smooth brush a lot then if i am i have to change some major sh major shapes then i i keep this in mind that i make the brush size big if the brush size is not big you can see this kind of problem occur and so for correcting those problems you have to zoom in the zoom into it and just smooth smooth that distorted part so this is the blocking part of the character and we will move further with the detailing part and different prop sculpt on this character I will give the reference image in the description box you can go and check out the reference from there if you want to follow along you can follow this video and as you can see that I have reduced the resolution to 80 that's why I'm able to smooth the mesh more easily because if the resolution if the resolution 
is high then it will not be it will not be suitable for you to smooth the mesh easily or deform the mesh easily that will create hard kind of shapes but if you want smooth results and if at the beginning you should keep in mind that you should have a less resolution mesh then after that you can keep increasing the resolution count i have selected the model alt tap on the mesh you can see that by using very simple things very simple tools and very simple buttons you can create so many kinds of characters because if you have check out my playlist on the youtube then you can see that i have created those characters those those props by using these kind of simple shapes zebra shoppers offers you a lot of tools a lot of features but it's not always mandatory to use all of them it's meant it's it's recommended but in which you are comfortable you are comfortable with using simple tools so just use the simple tools you can see the you can see the poly frame by clicking shift f button or you can see there is a button called poly frame you can click on it so that you will be able to see the density of your mesh now you can see that resolution count in, i have increased the resolution count and sometimes it happens that if you have changed the resolution it doesn't updates automatically so for that you have to change something in the model then after that you if you drag control on the canvas then the dynamic will reproject itself now i'm creating the mask for the glass part of the character basically this is the helmet kind of shape so i will just hold i am just holding control on the keyboard and making the mask by free hand if this video is getting very slow for you you can fast forward the video by going on to the youtube playback speed option because this channel and this video are meant for the beginners and that's why i have to keep in mind that everybody get the content which are which i am creating this step is important as you can see i have created the mask then i have pressed control w for creating a poly group this is the first time i am uh, make telling this thing on my channel how to create poly group then i have selected the outside mesh by holding control and shift then after that i have gone to the split button then i have split it the mesh hidden mesh turn off the visibility of the separated part then this is here i am testing out does the dynamic will work for this step or not so you don't have to follow this but in the video i was testing out that how should i make this part so for that i thought i found out a way and i move backward in the history then i just click the pointer then that that moves my uh, gizmo to the unselected part unmasked part then i just move that backward so here the most important step was that i moved backward in the history saved history and i when i got the class part i have i hope you are getting this point mm, i am scaling it in the z axis then control drag again to reproject that uh, reproject with dynamic and i will smooth out the edges now this part 
will be used as the class. So we are almost seeing the first look of the character. Now I will append a cylinder for the hands of the character. Control tap on the mesh or just go to support menu and select the model. Then rotate it by holding shift key. It will snap to 5 degree angle and scale it in the middle. Then using arrows you can place the cylinder for the hands of the character. And I am using gaze mode for placing the hands properly. So let's see that after this I will duplicate this by going on to the subtool master then mirror and so after that I will just move out the parts as just seeing the shapes and forms that sizes sizes of the mesh if they are small or big I'm checking out by rotating from right and left or seeing from every angle then I will merge down the mesh with the body Then I will apply the dynamic. Then I have not clicked the dynamic button. That's why it's not applying. But when I click and I will click dynamic, it will apply itself. Then I will smooth out the creases. Then let's move to the next part. In this part, I will just smooth out these parts. Then we will move forward in the next part. So stay tuned, keep watching these videos because in this video you will learn a lot of things, small small things but they will help you in your big projects. So keep watching.